Hi, it's Miss Bierman. Um, today I'm going to show you how to photograph your artwork with as much success as possible. So first of all, you need your artwork, and then secondly, you need something to photograph it with. So I have my artwork here. Um, this is a mandala that I created. So you might remember, uh, if you watch the abstract watercolor fiesta, um, this uh, circular canvas is painted with watercolor. And now you can see I've been drawing on top of it with colored pencils um, to create a mandala. All right, so I've got my artwork. I've got a device to photograph with. And um, I find that hanging the artwork on the wall um, actually works pretty well. So that's what I like to do. Um, you can see I've got some art in that black frame back there and it's near the window. Um, so because I already have an artwork there, there's already a, a hook or a nail. So I'm gonna take this artwork down just by my friend Tony. Beautiful, musical, abstract. And here comes my artwork. So I'm gonna hang my artwork up here and decide where the top is. Now, for lighting, um, natural light really works the best, but you don't want direct sunlight. So that's why I have it up here by the window. And if I open the curtain, I'm gonna get some more light in there. Um, actually, that might be good. Too much light is a problem. It'll overexpose your artwork. But that looks like it's pretty good. So now I'm gonna turn my camera on and I want to get as much of this in the frame as possible. So I'm gonna get kind of close to it. But I also want to watch to make sure that I don't have shadows. So every time I photograph at school, I get a lot of shadows because um, of the skylights. So it's kind of nice doing it here. Um, so I filled up the frame, making sure that things are in focus. It's very, very important. We don't want it to be fuzzy or blurry. So you can see here, and I've got a pretty good photo. Um, I know it looks like it's cropped, but it really isn't. It's just the weird way that the iPad works. So I'm pretty satisfied with that. The color looks good. Um, it's not too light, it's not too dark, um, and it really fills up the frame. So using the wall for me is really a bit easier, um, but here's your other option is to do it on the floor. Something I'm not crazy about is the floor as the background. So I'm going to find um, a piece of paper that doesn't have anything that's distracting on it. I, I have this big notepad that I can use. There we go. Now, I'm gonna hover this over. The lighting looks pretty good. doesn't look quite as good as the last one I took, so I'm going to actually bring this a little bit closer to the window. So again, checking for the light. Um, I know it looks distorted right now, but this is flat, and I'm going to hover this over parallel until I get that center. Take your photograph of your artwork. If you have something three-dimensional, that's going to be a little bit different. Um, let's see, do I have a three-dimensional artwork? nearby oh yeah I've got a little bear so let's say I want to photograph this three-dimensional artwork and that's going to be a little bit different so I have to find something to set it on um, a little table or something with a nice background so for my three-dimensional artwork I have this little paper mache bear that I made a long time ago um, you can see the background is pretty distracting um, it's got lots of books and different stuff back there. Now, if you can take a photo with the front in focus and the background blurry, ooh, now it's overexposed. You don't want that. <laughs> there we go. Um, 
I don't have that feature on my iPad, but some people have a feature where they can blur out the background and really just focus in on the front. Um, this is what I would call a three quarters view. So I'm gonna find a place where there's a nice background that's plain. All right, so I've got my little sculpture here, my little bear, and um, I've got him placed on a little table with a plain background, that's just the wall there. Um, and then we've got, this is called a three quarters angle. That's gonna be a front view, uh, side view, and of course the rear view. I'm gonna do a three quarters view. I find if I turn it this way, the light from the window um, illuminates it pretty well. And then I'm just gonna move around a little bit till I have a, a view that I like. That looks pretty good. So now I take the photo, click now click. You can take a look at my photograph of my three-dimensional sculpture. Um, and again, um, it's filling up the frame pretty well. The background isn't so distracting. Whoops, went away. Um, yeah, so this, you can see a shadow here. So if that shadow was over the artwork, I would definitely uh, re-photograph it, but it's back over here, so that's okay. Um, the shadows can be a little bit tricky, so. Just remember, in focus, good natural lighting, um, fill up the frame, and make sure that none of your artwork is cropped. Um, save it as a JPEG, which is another word for a photo, and email that to me if you're in grades two through eight. Include your artist information in the body of the text, um, artist title, media year, I think most years will be 2020, um, and if you're in K1, you're going to send that JPEG and artist information label to Mr. Heck. Um, so, uh, it's wonderful to see you again, and good luck with your photography. Feel free to contact me if you have any questions or need any help, and I will see you again very soon. All right, miss you guys. Bye.